let's get into it, okay? Uh, we're in this series, uh, Summer Soundtrack, where it's really a series in the Psalms. And uh, one of the things we're doing is we're just looking at some of the different Psalms. For those who might be new to the church uh, world or new to the Bible, uh, the book of Psalms is a very interesting book. It's a collection of 150 different songs, poems, and prayers. And inside of that collection, uh, there's, there's different genres of writing. There's, there, there's kind of like different categories. And so what we're doing is just kind of looking at the different categories. Uh, so, so far, we've looked at Psalms of uh, praise, Psalms of petition. And this morning, uh, we're going to do Psalms of peace, if you're taking notes. Psalms of peace. There, there are certain Psalms that by design are just, as you read it, as you enter into it, are just supposed to like wash over you, like with this, with this sense of peace. So if you've got a Bible, let's go to Psalm chapter 23. Psalm chapter 23 it has to be one of my favorite Psalms, uh, like it is almost everybody else who reads the Psalms. It's just, it's just so good. Uh, but before we read anything in Psalm 23, we kind of have to understand that um, it didn't just like burst on the scene out of nowhere. Like Psalm 23 didn't just happen. Uh, there's context to it. Psalm 23 was written uh, by David, like many of the Psalms we're looking at. Um, and the thing you need to know about David is that he experienced high highs and low lows. Like it was David. Like wrap your head around this, okay? David killed Goliath, okay? Like one of the most famous stories ever. Yeah, David's the, the, the little boy at that time who did it, right? It was, it was David who was made king. Like David succeeded in ways just unimaginable to most of us. He experienced high highs, but he also experienced low lows. Uh, it was David who last week we looked at, right, had the whole like Bathsheba incident, right? That was in kind of like an ugly mess. And it was David who lost a child at childbirth. It was David whose own son ousted him from the throne and then pursued him trying to kill him. So you think your family has issues? You ain't got nothing on David, right? Like, like, like high highs, low lows. And yet in the middle of all of this, David writes these words. Psalm 23, verse 1. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Okay, so let's just start with a question. Parkwood, if the Lord is our shepherd, then what does that make us? Come on, say it aloud. Sheep. Sheep. <laughs> now, I don't want to offend anybody in the room, but let's just call it what it is, okay? Sheep are notorious for being dumb, <laughs> okay? Sheep are wayward. Sheep um, are vulnerable. Sheep are prone to wander. Like, sheep, uh, like, like they, they just need a lot of help, right? The Bible says, look, we are sheep, okay? Like over and over, not just here, repeatedly, Old Testament, New Testament, it, it draws this imagery around God the shepherd. We, his followers, are the sheep. Now, let me tell you why that doesn't bother me. Okay, ready? Because the Lord is my shepherd. I'm okay with being a sheep. I'm okay with being called dumb. <laughs> as long as the Lord is still guiding me. As long as it's he who's actually leading me. You see, David here, he's actually tapping into something that we need to remind ourselves of more and more. He's, he's completely fine with being the sheep in this analogy because he knows the one who's leading his life. He knows the one who's calling the shots. He, knew, he knows the one who's, who's leading him, guiding him, protecting him, the one who's going before him and fighting his battles. He knows who that is. So he says, the Lord is my shepherd. And then he says this, and because of that, I shall not want, which is just a crazy thing to say. Like as, as humans, like our default is we want. We wander because we want. We wander because we need. We wander because we crave. We wander because we desire more and more and more. 
And David says, yeah, I know that's true of most sheep, but that's not true of me when I'm with my shepherd. He says, when I'm with my shepherd, like he is so good to me that I've just stopped searching elsewhere. When when I'm with my shepherd, like he, he provides everything that I need and more. See, what, what, what David is, is kind of communicating here in this psalm is that it's not the shepherd plus money equals happiness. It's not the shepherd plus uh, family equals the good life. No, it's the shepherd plus nothing equals everything. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. And because of that, I shall not want. And then he says this in verse 2. He says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Now, there's a lot of imagery in what David just said, and none of it's random. Okay, All of this is is supposed to put something in our minds, so let's just slow down and look. First thing he says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Now, I've looked at this, like several different commentaries, and the word make means make. Like the picture here is, it's like God is coming alongside of us and saying, like, no, you're just going to lie down here for a little bit. (laughs) Because the grass right here is the green grass that you need. Now, we don't like that, do we? (laughs) Like, you ever been in a season where it's just like, it's like every door around you is locked? (laughs) Every window sealed shut? It's like, man, why can't I leave? Well, maybe it's because he makes you to lie down there. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. We don't like that. And the reason why is because in our minds, the grass is always greener somewhere else. Right? We're always looking at somebody else's Instagram feed. We're always looking at somebody else's vacation photos. We're always looking at what they have. And we're like, man, if only I could do that, be there with them. Oh. David said, no, he makes me to lie down right where I'm at. Because this is the green pasture that I need right now. So, so if it's the good shepherd that's making us to lie down where we're at, maybe instead of us getting frustrated and angry, maybe we turn and just say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust that right now this is where you want me to be because everywhere you want me to be is green. Translation, the places you've, you've placed me are always for my good. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Now, that's an interesting line because the ancient Hebrews were actually afraid of water. Like they were. They, they, They believed that waters were chaotic and dangerous. We see this literally in the beginning of our Bible in the creation narrative, that the Hebrew underworld called Sheol was like a noisy, watery pit. And David says, yeah, But the waters that my shepherd brings me by, it's not a noisy, watery pit. It's not chaotic. He leads me beside still waters. You you know what sheep can do when they find still waters? They can drink. They, they, They can be filled. I love Isaiah, I think it's 55, where it says, Come to me, God says, all who are thirsty. It's like that that picture, come, Jesus calls himself the living waters, right? He says, like, come and drink. So the question is, what happens when a sheep finds green pasture and still waters? Well, it's the next thing. We get restored. He restores my soul and leads me in paths of righteousness for his sake. He fills me with every single thing that I need and more. He keeps me on the right path. He moves me forward for his name's sake. This is what the shepherd does. Now, as we move on, David is going to shift gears here, okay? And so I want you to be prepared. Here it is, verse 4. He then says this, Even though I walk... Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Can we just, like, push the pause button in the psalm and just ask, like, what just happened? It's like, where'd the the green grass go, David? 
It's like, what's up? Like, where, what happened to the still waters? All of a sudden, now we're in the valley of the shadow of death. Why? Because what David's showing us is that peace with God actually has very little to do with the circumstance that you're in. See, we associate the peace of God with uh, everything must be going well in my life, and if everything's just going well, then I'll have peace. But that's actually not true. David says, yeah, I can have peace in the green pastures and the still waters, and I can also have peace in the valley of the shadow of death. So so let let, let me try to explain this image here, the valley of the shadow of death, like what what David's trying to communicate. Um, When a shepherd wants to move the sheep, he never goes behind the sheep and tries to like drive them forward, right? He, they, they, they never try to push the sheep. The reason why is sheep are too dumb, okay? So what the shepherd has to do is he has to get out in front of the sheep, and when the sheep uh, can see the shepherd and the shepherd's moving ahead of them, then uh, the, the, the sheep will actually follow in the shepherd's footsteps. So what David is actually communicating here is he's saying, let me tell you why I'm not afraid in the dark seasons, in the dark times, in the dark nights. He said, I'll tell you why. is because my shepherd goes before me. And not only is he going into the valley of the shadow of death before I even get there, he's saying that the shepherd is so good that that he comforts me with his rod and with his staff. Now, I I, want to try to explain this, okay? So there's two different images here, the rod and the staff. The staff is probably the one that we most associate with shepherds, right? Right? It's got like the very famous like hook on the end. Um, the, the, the staff is a very loving instrument, right? The, the, the staff, the, the sheep, you know, they get out of line, you just kind of yank them back, you kind of direct them, you can, you can guide them in the right ways. That's the staff, a loving tool for shepherds. The rod, on the other hand, is not so loving. And it's actually not for the sheep. I've heard some people actually try to communicate that it is, that, 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 it, that, it, that is not the picture here at all. This is not uh, for the sheep. This is an instrument of war, okay? Like, like this here, the, the, the rod hung on the shepherd's belt so that as the shepherd went ahead of the sheep, the rod was used to pulverize the enemies, So whether that was the foxes or the wolves or the coyotes, whatever it was that was coming after the sheep, the shepherd was the protector. And so he's not just lovingly guiding the sheep along with the staff, but he has the rod, which by design is to pulverize the enemy while he stood in front and the flock got behind him. So see the picture. David's saying, yeah, that's why I'm not afraid. That's why I I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death, because not only does my my shepherd go before me, but he clears the way. He he, he clears the way. He's he's got the rod. (laughs) He's the one fighting the battles. I don't have to go toe-to-toe with a coyote. I don't have to stare down the wolves. Why? Because, no, I have a shepherd. I have a shepherd who's, who's, who's guiding me, and I have a shepherd who's going to fight my battles for me. You know... I bought this yesterday. <laughs> I was trying to come up with a club. It was a bright red bat, and I spray painted it, but I forgot to spray paint the end. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just looking at it. But the rod and the staff, the rod and the staff, this is why David has peace right here. I, I, I remember this story. Um, years ago, I was really young, and uh, my dad uh, was driving bus for kids who were going corn to tasseling, and my brother Marty and I kind of went with him, and, and so, well, they were all working. We were walking alongside this, this corn patch. What do you call a corn field? What? Field? Patch was the first thing that came. Anyway, we're walking alongside the corn, and all of a sudden, this dog, like, fierce dog. Um, anyone ever see the Sandlot? Yeah, picture that dog was running after us, like angry, like full tilt. This dog is going to attack. And I remember it as clear as day. My dad took my brother Marty and I, put us behind, picked up a log on the side of the ground. And when that dog came, just bam, 
I know there's some dog lovers in the room like, how could he do that? Listen, it was the dog or me, okay? So hopefully I win in your mind there. This is the picture. This is the picture. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you go with me. You go before me. Your rod and your staff bring me comfort. And then I I love, uh, like verse 5, it gets even wilder. Not only does the shepherd go before us, protecting us from the enemies, but David says this. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I gotta be honest, if if I was David here writing this psalm, I wouldn't have written it that way. I wouldn't have, I, I probably would have written it, Lord, you prepare a table for me in the presence of your greatness, in the presence of your goodness, in the presence of everything that you are, Lord, you invite me in. But that's actually not what David said here. He says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. In in case you don't know, there is a cosmic battle going on right now. Like right now. Like God has some very real enemies. And this is painted and described in different sections of our scriptures. Uh, Revelation, I think it's chapter 12, Uh, paints the picture, says that there was a war that happened in heaven. Uh, Satan and the demonic realm with him, that that what they did is they waged this war and lost. And then they were hurled out of heaven towards earth. And now God's enemies become our enemies. And so now like the the, the picture that, that the scriptures paint is that like these, this this demonic realm, it's like there are lions everywhere seeking whomever they can devour. This is the cosmic battle that's going on. And what's so awesome about this psalm is that it says that our shepherd is so good that he doesn't just fight our battles with the rod and the staff, but he sets a table for us in the presence of our enemies. See it now. He blesses us just to tick the devil off. Like, 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 seriously, you gotta, you gotta like wrap your head around this. Like, like he anoints our head with oil just because he can. Like, like he, it says he fills our cup to overflowing because this is actually a form of spiritual warfare. <laughs> like how, just try to wrap your head around this for a moment. Like how wild is it that God says, yeah, I'm not just gonna take the enemy out and I'm gonna fight those battles and I'm gonna protect you. But he says, I'm also gonna be the one, you're gonna dine in the presence of your enemy. You're gonna have a feast. Like, like that's the imagery here, the overflowing cup. Like, like, like I'm gonna bless you around the enemy who wants to take you out. This is our good shepherd. And then I love the very last verse, verse six. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As as, as we go to close this psalm off, I I, want to show you something that I find like fascinating here in this psalm. It actually doesn't say, surely your goodness and your mercy shall follow me. Um, It says, surely your goodness in in the Hebrew it says, your goodness, and then it uses this word, hased. Let me hear you say, hased. It's good. There's no English equivalent for the word hased. Uh, oftentimes, you might see the word mercy. Most times, you see loving kindness or sometimes steadfast love. But, 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 but it's, it's, it's a word that, that commentators and scholars struggle to try to uh, communicate what it really means in the English language. The, the best understanding of what Hased is is that it's the unconditional covenantal love of God. And it's hard to put into words. You see, when, when God enters into Hased, he enters into a binding agreement until death do us part. And even then, we won't part, for we will reign with him forever. God's has said is his unfailing, unceasing, unrelenting love. 
God's has said fundamentally says, as far as the east is, as from the west is, as far as I have removed your sin. God's has said, says, I know everything about you. Every sin you have committed, are committing, or one day will commit, and yet I'm still here. God's has said, says, there's nothing that you could ever do to make me turn my back on you. Like this, like there's no English word for that. So we struggle and we try to find things to, to, to fill it in. But David says that, that has said, that's what's chasing after me. It's, it's the goodness of the Hesed love of God. It's that type of goodness. It's, it's that type of shepherd who will never give up and never give out and never give in. That's the one who's coming after me. That's the one who's chasing me down. Surely goodness in Hesed shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This This is the 23rd Psalm. This is the Psalm of Peace. This Psalm by design is, is to cause the reader to enter in and to just let it hit us with all these different images that we've looked at, right? And that we would just see and kind of experience the peace of God. But I'm also aware that right now, there are people in this room or online living rooms. I don't know where you're at when you're listening to this, but, but I know that there's some people that you're saying, yeah, like I hear what you're saying, Danny, but if I can just be honest, that's not my experience at all. I'm not lying down in green pastures. I'm in a barren wasteland. The waters in my life are choppy. I'm not dining in the presence of my enemies. My enemies are dining around me. I have no peace. If that's you this morning, I want to ask a question. And as I ask this question, I don't want you to get angry. I, don't, I, I want you to honestly just evaluate your life. Because this is a very important question this morning. The question is this, is the Lord your shepherd or are you? Is the Lord calling the shots in your life or are you? Is the Lord directing your steps or are you? Like, which one is it? You have to understand right here, Psalm 23, this Psalm of peace, is the entire thing is set in the context of sheep who are surrendered to the shepherd. So listen, like I, I really don't know what you're going through. I don't know, like maybe you just feel like you're in the green pastures. Maybe you're in the valley of the shadow of death. I don't know where you're at right now. But what I do know is this, that peace can be yours today. Today, peace can be yours because peace is not the absence of pain. Peace is the presence of God. Okay? Peace, peace, uh, and I've said this before, peace is a person. Peace has a name. Jesus Christ. You see, about a thousand years after David wrote these words, the Lord is my shepherd, Jesus rolls up on the scene and says, yeah, and I'm him. Think about the words of Jesus. He says, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Isn't that amazing? In the old covenant, it was the sheep who laid down their lives for the shepherds. In the new covenant, it's the shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. He says, I, <laughs> I'm everything David was talking about. I'm the shepherd. I'm the field. I'm the water. I'm the one who goes before you, guiding you with the staff. I'm the one who goes before you, pulverizing the enemy. I'm the one who sets the table before you in the presence of the enemies. I'm the one who's blessing you. I'm the one who's filling your cup. I'm the one who's anointing your head with oil. 
He says, I'm the one who's doing it all. It's my goodness, God says, and it's my chesed that is chasing you down. I know this morning, I just believe it, that God is speaking to lives in the room and it's like he's, even in this moment, it's like he's coming after you. I love in Luke 15, Jesus tells the parable. He says, one day there was a shepherd. He had a hundred sheep and he lost one. One of the sheep did what sheep do. They went wayward. They tried to do it on their own. They tried to live on their own. They tried to separate from the flock. They, they, they tried to get away from the shepherd and, and that sheep got lost in the thicket. That sheep was in the dark. That sheep was gone. And so what does Jesus, the good shepherd, do? He leaves the 99 to pursue the one that was lost. And when he finds the one that was lost, and he does find the ones who were lost, and when he shows up knocking on that door, right, he, he picks the, sh- the, 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 the sheep up, he brings the sheep home, and then there's a party. <laughs> People rejoice for what was lost is now found. This is the chesed love of the shepherd of God. Everything we will ever need in this life is found in the person of Jesus Christ.